I will be creating a frame utilizing some encaustic wax, some copper that I will salt water etch, some leaves from my yard, and a few other things. Some tea bags and whatever else I can find within my studio and within my yard, within my home to finish this project. Now let me tell you why I am creating a frame at this particular point in time. I am working with two other creatives and we are playing a game of tag. That game of tag was started by Sharon over at Texture Junkies and she has tagged Kylie Koo Studio and myself, two old crows mixed media, to create a frame. So we will all be posting our videos with the hashtag tag a sister. And this is what we are going to create right now. And let me just further explain what we're doing. As a quick reminder, I'm Pig with Two Old Crows Mixed Media. Thanks for joining us. I want to get started with this frame with some tea bags. And I have emptied the tea out, or I'm emptying the tea out of all of these bags and putting them into place where I think they'll, they'll fit and look nice. Now, the thing that I do want to do with these when I'm adhering them onto the frame to be used with my encaustic wax is I really want to dilute that glue so I don't have a non-porous surface. So I'm just getting enough glue into the water to kind of hold them in place for me to put the wax on. Now here I am coating the wax and the wax is a mixture of Damar resin and beeswax, and it is off to my right, off camera, on a, an electric griddle in a metal container, and it is being heated to about 250 degrees to liquefy it. I am brushing it on and then fusing it to this frame with the heat tool. And to fuse, I'm just bringing that wax to a glisten and when I do that, I can see where I may have missed a spot or where I would like more coverage. I'm going back with another coat and I'll usually put two to three coats of wax on something that I am working on. So let me get another coat on here and I fuse between every layer. So I want to fuse the second coat to the first coat and Fuse them all, of course, to the frame. I've allowed that wax to cool to the touch, and now I want to put some marks in it. And I have chosen this chain, and it's a chain that, that you know, is from a thrift store piece of jewelry that I picked up and broke apart and probably used the little medallion on it or whatever was on it on a junk journal. But I'm utilizing the chain just to create some texture in that wax. And you'll be able to see the texture after we do the next step. But I am putting the chain down, covering it with a piece of deli paper, and then running over it with some pressure to get it to mark up that wax. And I'm utilizing just a brayer for that. Now, when I put the pan pastel on and I've chosen to use this olive green pan pastel. I'm rubbing that in. There's, there's a number of things that you can do to show the marks. Pan pastel is one of my favorites because it's subtle. Um, you can also use an oil paint or an oil stick to get down inside and then um, remove everything that isn't within the impression of 
of your image, but I just kind of wanted to darken it up a little bit. And I think you can see here that you can clearly see where I had that chain. So I will continue around the outside area of this frame with, with that same process. Now this frame also came with this three part interior. I've measured those and have cut a piece of 20 gauge copper to utilize in one of these three sections. I haven't painted that frame yet. I'm going to paint it with wax, but I want to kind of see how my insertions come out before I decide on a color. Now I've decided that I want this to be a nature theme. And I have these Tim Holtz dies that I am running on my Cricut uh, vinyl through my Hot Shot. So now I have the leaves, the tattered leaves, and I have just adhered those to that piece of copper. And that is going to go right there in the center. Now, we're not going to put that in the center with the vinyl on it. I'm going to salt water etch that copper. But now you can kind of see the construction of the frame and what I'm going for here. So we have the vinyl on where we want to etch. The vinyl will act as a resist for the salt water etching. So where you see the vinyl, will stay high and where the vinyl is not protecting that piece of copper, the copper will be removed. I'm putting that in a solution of water and salt and I use a uh, kosher salt to do this. I've drilled a tiny hole in the edge of it and have put a piece of copper wire through that hole because that is how I'm going to suspend it in the water. I'm covering the back of it because I don't want to remove copper from the back of the plate. I don't want to reduce the integrity of the piece of copper. I just want to remove around my leaves on the front. So this painter's tape will prevent the etching on the back or will prevent the removal of the copper on the back. I hope I am making sense. The other area on this piece that I want to protect is the outside edge of the copper. With the salt water, it's very aggressive and it will take the copper away very quickly. And I don't want it to make the edges of this craggly, for better lack of, of a word, if, if that is a word. But I think you understand what I mean. So I'm going around the outside edge with the Sharpie to create a resist. And that black ink will also be a resist for that salt water. I want to strengthen up this wire because the salt water will eat through it and I want it to hold as long as possible. And I can use batteries to do this etching with a positive and negative terminal. Those are 2D batteries. If you want to purchase one of these, they're very inexpensive. You can get the link in my, off of my website in my Amazon shopping area. I utilize this, which is something that I've had in my jewelry studio because I do a lot. And I put the negative with a piece of scrap copper on it. That's where we're going to attract the pieces of copper that will be removed from the positive, which is what we have attached to the piece that we're etching. So everywhere there is not a resist, we are going to be removing the copper. That copper will be attracted to that scrap piece of copper on my negative wire. And as you can see, the bubbling, that tells me that that's starting to remove the etching. So let's look at this now. 
This is after the copper has been in the saltwater etching for about 10 minutes. And look at all that copper in the water moving from the positive to the negative charge. Now, after it has been in approximately 40 minutes, I've pulled it out, rinsed it off, uh, put it in a baking soda water solution to stop the etching. And I'm now pulling off the vinyl and you can see the relief that I received from the 40 minutes. I'm cleaning this piece up, removing all the salt water off of it. I rinsed it good and I am getting it prepared so I can darken the areas that are etched. And I want to use liver of sulfur to do that. I purchased the liver, liver of sulfur solution. I, of course, had it in my jewelry studio side of my shop. But you can also do this with an egg by sticking your piece inside a plastic bag with a boiled egg and t close that up. And this liver of sulfur smells just like that egg would after a day or two. So it does stink up the studio. Now there's two ways to use this. This is probably not the way they recommend me just dipping a little and putting it over the top. They normally put it in some warm water and dip your piece in the warm water solution. But I've had luck both ways. I want to neutralize that now and stop the oxidation. So I am putting my pieces, I had another piece going as well. I'm putting both of my pieces in the baking soda and water solution and rinsing off all of that liver of sulfur to stop it from continuing to darken. So there we go. Let me dry this off and we'll move on to the next step. So I think we did pretty good. I, I hope you can clearly see the leaves and how they're, they're showing on that. And of course it will age and patina on its own, which I think makes it look very, very nice. Now I have some handmade paper that I want to utilize to encase these leaves in the encaustic wax. And I'm thinking, um, uh, arrangement of leaves on the top opening and an arrangement of leaves on the handmade paper on the bottom opening and that copper piece in the center. And I like the um, way the three kind of correspond with each other, but I think it needs something darker to make it really pop. So I am going to go back and paint that frame with a dark, and I'm going to darken a red to a deep burgundy and utilize that to paint that frame <clears throat> and give it, <clears throat> excuse me, give it a few highlights of gold. Now to prepare those pieces, I want to keep it consistent. So I am utilizing the encaustic wax on the paper. <clears throat> Just giving it a good coat, which I think really brings out the elements in that paper. And once it gets just a little tacky to the touch, um, not completely cured, I'm laying my leaves down and pressing them into that wax. And of course I'm doing that with this deli sheet and running my brayer over it just to make sure that they make really good contact. And then I will come back with some more encaustic medium over the top of those to secure those into place and hold them in. Now you see that blur, um, that's where the wax sometimes gets that foggy appearance. That 
comes out when you fuse it, but it also, after it completely cures, you can take a soft cloth and just rub and polish the top of your piece, and any of that fogging will um, dissipate. So, or will, you can remove it with polishing your piece after, of course, it's, it's cured. And encaustic wax takes a long time to fully cure. And it is, you know, if you're gonna have a, a piece in your home, it's something that you have to be committed to, one, keeping out of direct sunlight, and two, um, you know, polishing every so often. Now I'm coming back with the pan pastels and I am utilizing a bronze golden color and just defining some of the veining in those leaves. And here we have it framed. So I have put the frame atop. As I told you, I was going to paint that interior frame, that burgundy gold, and give it some gold highlights, or that burgundy red, and give it some gold highlights, or coppery gold highlights, to kind of coordinate with the copper, the etched copper in that centerpiece. There's my etched copper leaves, and I don't think I can get a really good picture to truly display the look of that etched copper because it is truly beautiful in person. But this is kind of my rustic version of the picture frame. So tag, it's your turn. Create your own frame and share with us what you do by hitting tag a sister. You have links to both Sharon and Kylie's channels here. If I have the links to their video by the time I put mine out, I'll link their video as well. But go check out Kylie. Go check out Sharon. And thank you for joining us. Appreciate it.